and I'm just like, what in the world? That, it seemed like that was how he propagated tons of figs. It wasn't that he just figured out how to do it once. He was getting roots out of all kinds of figs. And so that opens up a whole new world to you people out there that are saying, hey, it's already June. The tree's already growing green branches. I, you know, I'm moving soon. How do I preserve this thing before I move all the way across the country? All right, so here's the deal, guys. This is already the end of this video. We've either proven or disproven my little theory here. But you're going to have to watch the video to find out. And if you stick around somewhere in the middle to end of the video, I'm not quite sure exactly where it's at, but somewhere over there, you're going to hear something really, really flipping cool. And I'm going to direct you to something that's really neat that I think you guys are going to enjoy. So <laughs> you got to stick around for this one. You're going to like it. Let's go. another little expedition today and if you remember the series of videos I did about the homestead fig tree there's the trail that the fig tree is on and we're gonna find it again and we're gonna solve some problems and answer some questions right now here's the path that we're headed down we're gonna go find that old homestead fig again and we're gonna answer some questions actually one big question in particular and that is can we root a fig cutting after the tree has started actively growing Let's find out how we're gonna do that, guys. There is the fig tree. I wondered, it's still standing. Let's go take a look at it. So somebody come on ask me, you know, how do I get this thing to root if it's actively growing? Well, let's give it a shot. So what I'm gonna do is find a branch up here. I'm gonna cut it down further where there's no green growth, but there are plenty of latent buds, something that hasn't actually sprouted yet. And so we're gonna cut off a chunk and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we're back and we've got our huge branch here. And so here's what we're gonna do. Right now is typically not the time to take these cuttings because like I said, it's like May 28th today. It's everything's actively growing. You certainly wouldn't wanna take the cutting material from this soft green growth here. That's not gonna root. But you know, I thought there's gonna be latent buds all over this thing and people are saying, hey, can I still root cuttings of these? Well, let's give it a try. I'm gonna cut these down into sections. I'll even use some of the older material. So this is obviously current year's growth, this green growth here. And then this was last year's, this little thin stem. This was the year before. So we're talking like three or four years of growth backwards in time here. But if you can see, there's latent buds all over it. In each one of these little unions here, these little joints, there's buds. So we should be able to get those to root and grow from those sites because I guess you could say they're essentially dormant in this state. So I whittled all that branch down and I ended up with this many cuttings. So I've got five of the smaller branch cuttings here and then I got two large chunks off of that guy. So we're gonna see what these guys can do. I got uh, three different one gallon pots and we're just gonna put some rooting hormone on them, stick them in those pots and I'll show you where we go from there. But sometimes people say, how do I know which ends up? Well, if you look at the branch that you took the cutting from, you can see there is a little node right there, but there's always gonna be an area right below it that the old leaf came off of. And that's how you can tell. So the bud is always gonna be above that little leaf area where that leaf broke off. All right, so I went along and I scored each of these cuttings like I showed you in that previous video, my favorite video about fig cuttings, and I'll put a link in the description down below and up in the corner here. But uh, 
I scored them all, and then I went ahead and put rooting hormone on them. Now it's time to put them in the pot. Now a lot of people will tell me, Mike, you need to use a dibbler and you need to poke a hole first or you're going to rub the hormone off, but that's not necessarily the case. I do that with softer cuttings, but with these big hardwood cuttings, when I push this down in the soil, it's just going to force that hormone right along the flat surface there. It's not going to push off the bottom the hormone on the bottom of that cutting. And I'm telling you anyway right now, a lot of the times these figs, they don't even need hormone to root. We're just doing this for a little bit of added insurance. So I'm gonna shove these guys down into the bottom of these pots. Well, maybe two thirds of the way down into the pots and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got them all stuck here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and top them off with some more bark and then just water it in. All right, and there's all of our little cuttings sitting down in the pot. So I know I'm gonna get this question, so I'm gonna answer it. Now I did, the hormone that I did use was Hormidin 3. It's just an old can I've got and I'm using the end of it. Yes, I dipped it into the can. It's not gonna make a big difference at all. It's just the very bottom of it. That's the first thing. Second thing is, now I'm not gonna leave these in the hoop house because I know people say, well, what if I don't have a greenhouse? You don't need a greenhouse for this. So we're gonna put all of these on the north side of a building, probably my pole barn out there, where it doesn't get any direct sun. Now, usually that applies to containers like this plastic one over here because you don't want it heating up. But because we're on the verge of summer and I don't want these guys to start putting out growth too fast without the roots, I just want to keep them a little bit cooler in the shade. They're going to get plenty of overhead skylight. So this may take like six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. That's not too much to ask. I'm in it for the long haul and we might get some nice cuttings. This is gonna work out great for those of you who are like, man, I'm selling my house. I gotta get this done. The tree's already actively growing. What do I do? This is what you do. Today is, today June 10th, I believe, or sorry, July 10th. Today is July 10th. And I just kind of walked out here and noticed we got a little shoot coming up. Isn't that so cool? So it's, you know, in my experience, it's not a definite indication that there's roots, but it is an indication that that's alive and well and things are happening. We've also got another bud over here swelling and it's wanting to start coming up. Now, when you cover your hardwood cuttings like this, you typically will get this green growth and then there probably won't be roots for a while. But with the hardwood cuttings that are uncovered, like we're doing it here, I typically do get roots down in there before I get the top growth. So we'll find out. I'm not in any hurry. I just want to take my time and let these guys just start growing more into the summer. It's been a cool summer around here. These guys aren't doing anything yet. I haven't seen any green. They may not do anything. So we'll come back. Like I said, July 10th today. We'll come back when something's happened here. Check this out guys, today is July 26th and more things are happening. I just wanted to give you a quick update. So we've got lots of nice growth coming out of this one. We got growth coming out of that one back there. We got new buds opening up here, new buds here. Every single one of these are doing something except for that guy right there. But maybe he'll do something, who knows? But four out of five so far isn't bad. Now, I thought I had kind of lost hope on these two big fat ones, but they just generally take a little bit longer. Let's look and show you what I just noticed. Well, we'll start with this big guy. Look at this. These little guys, these little buds are just starting to open up. Look at that. And they're gonna take off. This thing's probably gonna root too, this big fat one. It just took a little bit longer. This guy, I don't see anything going on, but that doesn't mean that, actually, hold on, hold the phone. I see a little bit of green growth down in there. Can you see that? Right there, that little tiny bud. If I can get this to focus, you see it? It's right above my fingernail. Little bit of green. Who knows, maybe we'll get all these things to root. July 26th. We'll just let them keep doing their thing and see what happens. Remember, we did nothing with these. We just stuck them in pots in the beginning of summer, out in the open on the north side of a building. That's it. All right, this is it, guys. Today is August. I don't remember. It's like the 6th or 7th. It's the 7th. And we started this project May 28th, I'm pretty sure. Today 
is the moment of reckoning. It's the day of reckoning, but this is the moment of reckoning. Let's go check them out. So it has been a little over two months since we started this project and I am proud to bring you freshly rooted fig cuttings off of last year's growth and quite possibly the year before. I believe it was the year before. And look at these guys. They are looking fabulous. Look at those leaves. I love these big fat cuttings, man. They look like little bonsais. These big stout guys with these leaves and branches coming up. Even this big fat one starting to do something here. And we got a beautiful little forest going on right here. But, and I know you guys are going to get uptight about this. We got to do something about this. We can't keep these guys hidden from you. We're going to have to get down in there and see what's happening. I will probably save this one. I'm not going to disturb this one because I just love how beautiful it is. But I don't need, what is that, eight, seven, eight cuttings of the same tree because I've already got this tree. This is for educational purposes, guys. We got to see the roots. All right, so we've got all our beautiful figs just lined up here. We are setting this one aside because I just love how that looks. So she's going aside. And I think the first thing we need to do is just pull these guys out and see what we've got. So let's go ahead and do what you're all cringing about. But this is for educational purposes, guys. And I want to see the roots. So let's do it. Let's see what we got. Come on. All right, here we go. You guys ready for it? Look at that. Fantastic. We've got roots all around the bottom of this. This one got kind of yanked. And you can see it's got one little root, but I think some just got pulled off. Let's break these apart a little easier. Here we go. I got to show this to you guys. And of course you would not do this. You would leave them in that pot all the way into the winter till they're dormant. And then you would pull them apart. But we got to show you what this looks like. Look at this. It's so interesting to me. I'm going to wash all this off so you can see where those roots are coming out of. All right, guys, here they are. I got them all washed off. Look at that. Look at all those roots. These guys are just busting out at the seams. Let's take a look at one of these real quick. So this guy right here, actually, I want to look at this other one. I'm going to set this down and this down. And we are going to look at this one right here. So, let's take a look. You can see, if you look closely, let's see if we can get this guy close up here. If we look closely, you can see where I slit that cutting. You can see the cut marks, the slices that I made with the razor along there. Or with the uh, pruning shears. And the funny thing is, <laughs> I wanted to show you this. That's not even where the roots are coming out of. So do we even really need to do that? Apparently, the answer is no. Look at that. You can see that slice there. The roots are just coming out of the wood all around the slices. It's kind of crazy. I, I mean, you, you can see callus buildup in those slices. Let's get this closer. You can see callus buildup in them. But the roots are coming everywhere but... Those little slices, show you the end. It's just crazy, crazy bizarre. So, I don't know that we even need to slice these things, guys. Maybe that helped in just collecting more rooting hormone or absorbing it or something, but isn't that, isn't that cool? I think that's so cool, man. Neat little leaf growing on there. That is such a cool shot. Let's look at this one. So this is a, growing a little bit more. We got a nice leaf on it, or a nice little branch. And let's look at this one again. Those slice marks. Well, okay, I take it back. Or do I? Right there, you can see that one's got that slice mark. And it seems to have some. In fact, let's go to the other side. You can see it right there. It seems to have some of them growing out of there. So, But they're not growing further up. They're growing down near the bottom of the cutting. That's interesting. And I noticed that a lot lately. A lot of these roots, quit. Well, there's a root. It looks like it broke. That's coming from higher up there, but most of them are coming down at the bottom of the cutting. I just, I have a feeling 
You know, when the plant is sending all of its nutrients to where it needs to root, it's sending them right down to the base. And we don't need to slice it. We just need to stick these things. We just need to take the cutting, <laughs> stick it in the soil, and let nature do its thing. Quit messing around with it. This one looks pretty much the same. Roots at the bottom, not along the slices. All right, we got to check this big one out now. Let's go ahead and pull this out. I love these big fig cuttings, man. They're so cool. They're just so cool looking. Whoa, look at all those roots, man. Look at that. Wow. These big ones just root so awesome. I can't wait to get this washed up and show it to you. Wow, look at that fat cutting. That is so cool. That is so cool, guys. Look at that, man. That is just fantastic. Let me get this washed up for you. All right, let's take a look at this. Look at that. First of all, you can see it just had a little bit of growth coming up right there. Just a little tiny bit. But look at those roots. And the roots on this big one are even fatter, man. They're just super fat and luscious. Juicy roots. Look at that. Let's see if we can get this. Make sure it's kind of, hopefully, I think it's zoomed in there. Or not zoomed in, but focused. But look at that. Isn't that cool? So let's look at those cut lines again. See how I made those cuts all along there? Cuts everywhere. They swole up, and you can see they just filled up with all that cambium. Just fill, or not cambium, but all that uh, callus in the cambium layer there. It just, just bubbled up and filled up, and it's such a cool look, but no roots. Look at that big line I made right there. No roots coming out of it, all down at the base. I just wonder, do we even really need to do that? Do we need to slice these things up? I don't know, man. Maybe not. It doesn't appear to need it. But these things are so cool, man. Just massive sticks rooting like crazy and so easily. That is just awesome. And just to show you the last two I hadn't shown you yet, we had one little root there on that one and it's fully branching out there i think i ripped some roots off that one that came out first and then we got roots on that guy so we're at 100 percent guys and so we're left with one final fig one beautifully rooted giant fig cutting and this one was from two year old wood guys pretty cool and I know a lot of you are wondering, what happened to all those other figs he just showed me? They're already on the compost heap. Now chill out. I could have rooted a thousand of those things. It doesn't matter. Some people turned it into kindling. The point is in the knowledge that you gain from this video. I couldn't possibly raise every fig on the planet right here in this hoop house. So just relax a little bit. We've got one beautiful, beautiful little bonsai fig tree. Now, if you guys stuck around for this, I want to talk to you about something that I'm super excited about and every once in a while I see something on YouTube and I'm just like blown away. You know what I mean? Like I'm just blown away. And I recently saw a video, actually it was like halfway in the middle of filming this video and I was blown away. And so the video was actually made by a guy named Dan Foster. And if you guys are into figs and you're watching this right now because you're into figs and you're already in that world and you're probably a member of the Facebook group What the Fig started out by Dave. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it starts with an S. Then you guys will already know Dan Foster. And some of you may have seen this video, but I was blown away. So I was always under the impression that you probably couldn't root figs from softwood cuttings. And I'm talking about the, let's grab this guy right here. I'm talking about like the, this isn't a fig obviously, it's a road dinner, but like the green succulent current growth that's just popping up from this current year. I'm not talking about woody stuff. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about current green this green growth right here, you can take a cutting of that. You know, I always imagine you take a cutting of that, the sap's just going to flow out real fast. They're too soft and supple. They're just going to wilt and die. It's just probably not realistic. Could it be done? I never count anything out, but I just thought, eh, I probably don't even want to try it. But this Dan Foster has come up with a method to propagate green wood cuttings and the reason i'm telling you this and by the way i'm going to put a link to that video down below if i can go find it i need to go find it i'll put a link down below i'm gonna find it that's my job here for you but this guy figured it out and i'm just like what in the world that it seemed like that was how he propagated tons of figs it wasn't that he just figured out how to do it once 
he was getting roots out of all kinds of figs. And so that opens up a whole new world to you people out there that are saying, hey, it's already June. The tree's already growing green branches. I, you know, I'm moving soon. How do I preserve this thing before I move all the way across the country? I want this fig. How do I preserve it? And in the past, we would always say, hey, it's too late, man. You got to wait till next winter. And that's why I did this video to prove I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out, but I was pretty sure it would turn out in our benefit, you know, in our favor. But I want to show you that this is how you would do it. You just go down further on the branch and take some of the woody material, even though it was actively growing, and you would stick it in a pot and make it happen. This brings up another point we're going to talk about in a minute. But Dan, in this video, took green wood cuttings. He took green wood cuttings and he rooted them. I don't know. I'm starting to question my own abilities, guys. I thought it was absolutely spectacular. And when I see something spectacular like that, Dan doesn't know I'm sitting here talking about him right now. So he has no idea I'm pumping up his video. But when I find something that spectacular, I have to share it with you guys. I have to share it with the world. And so you got to go check it out. <laughs> I just think it's so fantastic because in my mind, I imagined that those green wood cuttings probably wouldn't root. He proved me wrong. So my next point is... Why are we struggling and suffering with all of these myriad of rooting techniques? Now, it's fun to do all these rooting techniques, I will admit. We've had a lot of fun over the years, but why are we struggling with them when this method is so flipping easy and works 100% of the time so far? 100%, guys. 100 so I'm not saying that I'm retiring fig propagation methods. I will always experiment, but I am saying on a mass production scale, I think from now on, I'm just gonna take a bunch of cuttings in the spring. I'm gonna stick them in pots. You could probably do a thousand like this. And I'm gonna put them on the other side of my pole barn and we're just gonna let them sit for two months, 10 weeks, whatever it takes. And there you go, leave it in the pot, let it go dormant. Next spring, it's going to take off like a rocket. All right, so the coffee's really talking in this video today. I think we've pretty much gotten out everything we need to get out of this one here, and you get the point. So if you're interested, go click on Dan's video. I think you guys will really like it. And uh, also, I have a video where I did propagation of figs last year, and it was similar to this, but I had them on bottom heat first. If you haven't seen that one, go click on it. I'll put a link in the description below. That's a fun one too. But anyway, I think we're done here. If you guys like it, hit the like button. Please hit the like button. It helps out. Subscribe if you want to follow along. And I hope you have a fantastic week. <laughs> I know I'm gonna. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios. <laughs>